Okay, hold on, please. You made a mighty good statement yesterday that I saw on last night. Yes, well, we experienced a difficult situation here. Well, it's difficult all over the country. I met with about six or seven hundred up today and here on equal uh, employment. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, we just got so much We've got just so much to do, as I told you the other day, that I don't know how we'll ever do it, but we've got to get ahead with it. I, I had all day long yesterday, and all day the day before, I was having 44 to 44 votes, 43 to 42, and uh, finally I won last night by three extra, and now my bill got to go back to the house, go through Judge Smith again, go to conference, my poverty, they determined to destroy it, to scandalize it. And, uh, I thought Shriver was about as uh, popular and about as fair a young man as he could do and had a pretty good image. And uh, uh, he was Kennedy's brother-in-law. But uh, they, they just raised the dickens in all these states, and particularly all the governors are upset. And the mayors uh, can't get along. And I got a letter from Kiko last night He's a pretty decent fella. Yeah. I told him I'd get busy in every one of these programs. I told Lee to tell you I'm here with a bunch of Latin American ambassadors, sure. and uh, they're upset because they want more for sugar, and their people are all starving. But uh, I told him to tell you what. Uh, uh, did he go over the Kiko thing with you? Yes, he went over it with me. Read the letter. And I would get in. Uh, I would get in. Uh, uh, Shriver, if you think that's what we ought to do and do anything that uh, we ought to, I've got each one of these agencies now that uh, uh, have a responsibility in this field. I've sent them Kiko's letter to me and my letter to him and asked them to prepare for uh, 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 crash action. And uh, I guess that uh, I got a mean letter from Yordy. He says that our people up here said that he wouldn't cooperate. I don't know who said it, uh, if anybody, but he's upset with us. Demands I investigate that. How do you see it? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. President, I have met with uh, so all levels of leadership here and I've talked with people in the Watson area. Now, this is really what uh, concerns me uh, very much. I, I'm not optimistic at this point about the possible outcome of this. Because in talking, uh, Governor Brown has been marvelous in the statement and the moves that he's made. I had a long time. Yeah, by the way, I made, uh, they might, you might misunderstand it, but I took your statement you made the other day and one or two others made about uh, we, uh, pass laws to help people and we got to all obey the law and we can't uh, violate it either as a Klansman or either uh, with a Molotov cocktail that we we ought to obey the law. And I made that to the Equal Employment people today and made it pretty strong. But I wound up, I said what we've got to do is take the, find a cure and go and correct these conditions where the housing and the ghettos and the rats are eating the children in the schools and the hunger and the unemployment and so forth. Yeah. And. Uh, they're all God's children, and we better get at it. Yeah, yeah. But I want you to know I said that. Pardon me if interrupt, but go ahead. That's all right. Uh, but in, in my meeting with uh, Police Chief uh, Arthur and Mr. Jordan, Mayor Jordan, I just uh, felt uh, that uh, they are absolutely insensitive to uh, the problem and to the need to really cure the situation. Uh, 
park is uh, very rude, man. You should be getting anywhere with it. But uh, I just don't see a willingness even on the part of the mayor to grant uh, just a few uh, concessions to make, uh, uh, to bring about a new sense of hope in the community. Now, what is frightening about it is that you hear all of these tones of violence people out there in the water area with the National Guard and the Black Panthers. The minute that happens, uh, there will be retaliation in the white community. Last time, that was not. It was wonderful. But people have bought up guns and took the talk on the television. And uh, they were able to do it and all of that. Uh, so that I'm fearful that if something is done to give a new sense in that area, and they are public, that uh, a full-scale race war And uh, I'm concerned about that naturally because I know that violence is a riot and it will be able to just help. That's right. Now, what, what should we do about it? What's your I recommendation? Mean, I think the poverty, if they can get in the next few days, this poverty group going in Los Angeles, I believe it. I'll get him over here in the morning. We'll get at where are you going to be? I'll be in Atlanta in the morning. All right, we'll call you back. Lee will call you or I'll call you if I have time, and we'll we'll explore it. Is that the net of what you're recommending? That's right. I think right. this would be great. This would right. help great things. All right, now you better get your thinking cap on on this conference because we're going to have to rush it. We don't want to rush you too much. We want to have plenty of preliminary work on the panels and things. Uh -huh. But you better, you can see here that uh, my Howard University speech wasn't any too early. That's right. That's right. You said, you said it right there. That's right. Well, we arrived in during the thinking. Well, you refer to that some in your statement. You just point out that uh, we've seen this national thing, that you've been in here. We were talking about it the last week. Wasn't it last week you were here? That's right. And we were talking about Howard University last month, right. and say that, yeah. and just say that, uh, we, we, that the clock is ticking, that the 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 the, the, the hands are moving, and uh, we we just uh, the good Lord uh, is going to allow us some time, and He's trying to give us some warnings, but uh, uh, the country's got to stand up and support what I'm doing, and uh, I can't have these poverty things hitting me 43 to 43. Right. 44 to 42, that's that's just too close for the United States Senate. That's right. And I've been seeing you on television every night. You make a reasonable, fair, just thing. But uh, I think you ought to say that the president recognized this thing uh, uh, months ago and talked to you about it and all the leaders. He had all the leaders in here, and he talked to them at Howard University. And the speech is available, and they ought to read it. And... Uh, that we're going to have a meeting, nationwide meeting, and try to form it. But we can't wait, and uh, we've, we've got to have some of these housing programs, and we've got to get rid of these get ghettos, and we've got to get these children out from where the rats eat on them at night, and we've got to get them some jobs. I, I had a youth job, but we got two million unemployed. I got 500,000 of them as a goal, and I set up the vice president. Connor and we got all the businessmen to give them jobs, and we we reached our goal to 500, so we re increased it to 750, and we reached that yesterday, and now we reached 800 yesterday. So today I increased it to a million, so that'll be a million of two million. But I told the crowd today we're just 50 percent. Well, when you bat 50 percent, that's not very good. That's right. That's we so there's a million still that got no place to go and to get up these youngsters. Yeah. Well, that's that's. But you put a little of that stuff in your thing. Uh, Refer to that Howard University speech. Nobody ever publicized that. Almost every speech I've made, because uh, I, I think it's the best statement and analysis of the problem I've seen anywhere. And certainly no president has ever said it like that before. Well, we were ahead of it, and we got to keep ahead of it. We're not now unless we do, but uh, they never publicized it in the end. You, you have a... You, you own television, and you ought to make them. Hell, tell them to read it, write and get it, and let's get busy and and let's get into this housing, let's get into this unemployment, let's get into this health, let's get into this social security uh, situation, let's get into this education, let's get into. I said this morning I spent the biggest part of my life for the last uh, four years on civil rights bills, but uh, 
it doesn't, uh, all of it comes to naught if you have a situation uh, like war in the world or a situation in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I said a man's got no more right to destroy property with a Molotov cocktail in Los Angeles than a Ku Klux Klan has to go out and destroy a life. And what we got to do is all obey the law, but uh, no use giving lectures on the law as long as you got uh, rats eating on people's uh, children and unemployed and no roof over the head, no job to go to, and uh, maybe with a dope needle in one side and a cancer in the other. Because they don't have very good judgment. People don't that got that kind of condition. And we're not doing enough to relieve it, and we're not doing it quick enough. And that I'm having hell up here with this Congress. I'm supposed to know the vote was that close. Oh, I had a tie vote, 43 to 43. Is that so? And if the, the amendment was to cut me 900 million, and uh, 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 no, 791 million, 791 million out of a, a, a billion six, just cut me in half. And uh, if the amendment had been adopted, they'd have cut it. But an amendment fails when it's a tie. It's not adopted, so it was a tie. That's how close it was. They're doing the same thing with my other things. Uh, uh, they're just, uh, they think that I'm getting far away from election and that I haven't got the crowd support me anymore. And I carried all but five states, but uh, they say, well, Goldwater wasn't any good. Johnson's not either, and he's got Vietnam on his side. They all got the impression, too, that you're against me in Vietnam. You don't leave that impression. I want peace as much as you do and more so, because I'm a fellow that had to wake up this morning with 50 Marines killed. But these folks will not come to the conference table, and I'm... I've said this, Mr. President, and I am concerned about peace, and I have made it very clear. I think my peace is I've made it very clear that at the present time, two things. First, that it's, it's just unreasonable to talk about the United States having a unilateral withdrawal. On the other hand, you have called 14 or 15 times unconditional talk, and it's Hanoi. That's right. Now that, that's just the, that's the perfect that's the perfect position. That's just exactly the position. And we got to get you with Goldberg when you get up here, and let him tell you what he's trying to do behind the scenes to shove them some more. And if we got enough strength out there to hold on, and they get discouraged, we ever get them to the table, and we just got to get them to the table because there's no use of shooting when you can talk. Yes. yes. Well, I got a call. Well, that's uh, I'm going to talk with him next week. I told him last week to go talk to you and to talk to Eisenhower and talk to everybody. Let's don't let this country get divided. Well, because I'll be sure to do that next week. That's good. Thank you, and I'll have Lee White. I'll have Lee White call you in Atlanta sometime tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much. Now, is there any other suggestion you got? Well, that's really the main one. Well, I, I appreciate you doing this. The way to function. You you did a good service going out there and trying to give some leadership and then call in to us and report. If you got any suggestions or recommendations, why, I'm just as close as a telephone. If you've got enough money to pay it, if you have them, why, call collect. All right. Goodbye. All right. I, I, want, I want you to get your busy, people busy on this conference, though. Yeah, we're working on it. All right. All right. Bye.